Hey everybody, Barrett here with Spec of Tech. Welcome to the channel. So I recently did a review of the Arendal 1723 Towers, which I'll link in the top right hand corner of this video. But I did get a lot of comments as to how these speakers compare to something like the Klipsch RP8000Fs or even the SVS Ultra Towers. So that's something that I'm gonna cover in today's video. I'm gonna give you guys my perspective and my opinion on all three of those speakers because I have had the SVS Ultras as well as the Klipsch RP8000Fs in this room along with obviously the Arendal 1723s. So on this channel, you may remember that I did do a video of the Klipsch versus the SVS, which I'll link in the top right hand corner as well. So I'm not gonna do a Klipsch versus SVS in this video, because I've already done that. This is gonna be strictly those two speakers versus the Arendal 1723s. So we might as well get right into it. So first of all, I did have the Klipsch RP8000Fs, but they were the first version. They're not the Mark II that are out on the market now. From what I've heard, the Mark IIs do have a flatter response, but I haven't heard them personally, so I can't speak to that. And while we're on the subject, of Klipsch, we might as well start comparing the RP8000Fs to the Arendal 1723s. So I did have the 8000Fs uh, probably about two years ago now. So keep in mind that this is a lot based on memory. So first of all, we need to talk about the price. Um, keep in mind that the reason I'm doing this comparison is not because these are close in price. I'm only doing this comparison because I did get uh, quite a few questions about this speaker versus the Aaron Dolls as well as the SVS Ultras. But when talking about the RP8000 F Mark IIs, they are currently around 1800 US uh, dollars MSRP. Of course, you probably are gonna be able to find discounts on Black Friday and Christmas and that sort of thing. But their current S MSRP is $900 per speaker or $1,800 per pair. And the pair that we're talking about specifically is actually the Klipsch RP8000F original version, which looks like you can find them for about $500 per speaker or $1,000 per pair, which makes the price gap even bigger in this case. And the Arendal 1723 towers are 3699 US dollars per pair. So please do keep that in mind when we're talking about these speakers. There is a substantial price difference here. So um, I know that not everything that's more expensive is better, but in this case, these are substantially more expensive, so they should be better than the Klipsch. So again, keep that in mind when we're talking about them. So let's quickly discuss the build quality of these two speakers before we discuss the sound quality. Uh, when it comes to the Klipsch, they did do a really good job with the speaker, especially considering the price. I do believe that they look nice. They do come with magnetic grills, which is nice to see, especially for a more budget-oriented speaker. Um, the look the, itself is something that I do like. I do like the ceramic woofers, like the gold looking woofers. Uh, the wrap that they use isn't my favorite. Uh, it does look good enough, but it isn't one of my favorite wraps that I've seen on a speaker. But again, when you're dealing with a speaker of that price, they do have to keep things down. But all in all, in their price range, you are getting a quality speaker that does look nice as well. But when compared to the Arendal 1723s, they are falling behind as they should, uh, given the vast price difference between these two. But the Arendals are using um, a more hefty HDF or high density fiber board. They are very solid, uh, very rigid speaker. I do find that the gloss black looks a lot nicer. It looks a lot more premium uh, than the wrap on the Klipsch RP8000Fs. And you do have a choice of two different feet as well. You have rubber feet or spiked feet. The 1723s do have a much nicer speaker terminal as well, in my opinion. They are rhodium plated uh, copper. They have a very nice look and they are mounted to um, a brushed aluminum plate, which again does have a very nice aesthetic, but it also looks very well built. So to sum up the build quality on the two, the Arendals are noticeably nicer. They are noticeably better built in my opinion. Uh, they do look like the more premium speaker. All right, so let's move on to the sound quality and starting off with the Klipsch uh, RP8000Fs. They have a very polarizing sound. So there is plenty of people that love the Klipsch sound out there. Don't get me wrong, but there is also plenty out there that hate the Klipsch sound. Um, there is some people that uh, refer to them as shouty or bright. Uh, they have a scooped out mid-range, which is all relatively true. They have made leaps and bounds uh, recently to try and get rid of that stigma of being bright and being shouty. They are making changes to their speaker, which is really great to see to help please the customer while still trying to retain uh, a lot of their uh, signature sound. But when talking about the RP8000F original version, I would say there was a little bit of that brightness there, uh, definitely a little bit of that scooped out mid-range. The mid-range on these speakers is not something that you're going to brag about. Uh, it's not their strong suit, but they're kind of what you would call, in my opinion anyway, uh, like a rock and roll speaker. They can go loud, they got some good solid bass, they have some good solid clear highs. Now with that waveguide that they use, it can get a little bit shouty but really what that is is just a forwardness uh, which actually does help a lot with the imaging and the sound staging so to sum up the Klipsch RP8000Fs you're getting a speaker that you're either going to love or you're going to hate uh, if you do like kind of perceived uh, increase in detail because it is a little bit bumped up in that treble range you are going to hear a lot of detail it can get fatiguing though and it can be a little bit shouty 
Um, Mid-range is definitely not a strong suit here, so keep that in mind. They do have good base, though. Uh, they have some good rumble to them. They have some good punch to them. Those Sarah Metallic drivers do seem to do a very good job in the base range, just not so much in the mid-range. So in comparison to the Arendelle 1723s, I would say that they are the much better or more well-rounded speaker. They have a close to neutral sound. A lot of people have labeled them as a little bit bright, and I would say that they are a little bit bright, but I don't want you to walk away from this review labeling them a bright speaker. I don't want to say they are a bright speaker, but they do have a little bit of brightness to them. Um, the mid-range is great. I do love the mid-range on these speakers. It's something that isn't really a standout uh, aspect of the sound of this speaker, but it is there. It's very well balanced with the rest of the speaker. It's just not the star of the show. I would say the star of the show is the fact that these can go incredibly loud while remaining very low distortion. They do have a very crisp and clean treble, uh, but they do also have some incredible bass with those four eight inch drivers. It is a two and a half way design versus the two way design of the Klipsch, but they do manage to, to squeeze out quite a bit more sound quality in my opinion. So to answer the question simply, uh, if it's going to be a question of between the Klipsch RP8000Fs and the Arendelle 1723s, I don't think anybody's going to be surprised here, but my pick is going to be the Arendelle 1723s. They're much more well-rounded. They have uh, incredible bass. They still have an, a much better mid-range than the Klipsch RP8000Fs, and they do have a very nice, crisp, detailed high-end that I would say is less shouty, uh, so to speak, then the Klipsch, it's a little less forward, but still does the job exceptionally well. I find these speakers to perform very well for music and even better for home theater. So they would definitely be my pick between those two speakers. So if you have the budget for them and you're a toss up between the Klipsch and the Arendelle, no question, go with the Arendelle. All right, so let's move along to comparing the SVS Ultra Towers to the Arendelle 1723s. Again, we do have a price difference here. The uh, Ultra Towers are 2,600 US dollars per pair. And again, the Arendelle 1723s are 3,699 US dollars per pair. So about $1,000 more. So again, keep that in mind with this comparison. So let's briefly cover the build quality again of these two speakers. So starting off with the finish, uh, the SVS Ultras are available in a gloss black, which is what I have here in the Arendals, a gloss black. They both look nice. Uh, they're both well done. I do feel like gloss black does add a premium look to a speaker versus just a standard black, but it can be a little bit frustrating for those that have a home theater and they don't like the glare. So you have to keep that in mind as well. But for me personally, I do like a gloss black and both SVS and Arendal did a great job of their gloss black speakers. The SVS are also a very nice looking speaker. They have some nice machined uh, metal around their drivers. It is a shape that some are either going to love or some are going to hate. I didn't mind the shape. I did like the fact that they were something a little bit different versus just a rectangular speaker. Not that a rectangular speaker is bad, but I just like the fact that it had a little bit of uniqueness to it. But with that being said, the Arendelle 1723s, again, are a much better built speaker in my opinion. They are made with that high density fiber board that I already previously mentioned. The SVS are made with MDF. The uh, speaker terminals on the Arendals again, look much nicer than the ones on the SVS Ultra Towers. I do like that rhodium coated uh, copper, which has a nice chrome look to it with that brushed aluminum plate. All around, the Arendals just kind of knocked it out of the park when it comes to the look of these speakers, especially when uh, considering their price. So again, they are $1,000 more, but they do give you more in the aesthetic department and more in the better build quality department, in my opinion. All right, so let's move along to the sound quality of the speakers. When I originally got the SVS Ultra Towers, I did compare them with the RP8000Fs, and I did find them to be the better speaker. They were my choice. Um, and I think kind of what stood out the most was that they had a richer, more full mid-range, uh, which we already covered about the Klipsch. It's not one of their strong suits, but with the SVS, it was one of their strong suits. I, I did like the speaker overall. It did have a, a nice crisp high end that was lacking a little bit of detail in my opinion, now that I've heard some other speakers since then. The, the mid-range was nice and rich, but I did, again, feel like it was lacking a little bit of detail since I've heard more speakers since then. The bass is actually something that stood out, again, about the SVS Ultra Towers. They have those two side-firing 8-inch drivers, which do provide some pretty solid bass. I wouldn't say it's the most uh, audiophile bass. It's not the cleanest in the world, but it's not bad. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it can hit very hard, and it can add a very good rumble, which works great for uh, home theater, but it also does work great for music as well, as long as you have them tuned properly. So all around, the SVS Ultras were a better all-arounder than the Klipsch speakers, in my opinion. But moving on to comparing the Ultras to the Arendelle 1723s, I feel like the Arendelles 
just kind of take what was good about the SVS Ultras and make it better when it comes to the sound. I do feel that the high ends uh, is a little bit more clear. It's a little bit more detailed while still refraining from being too bright. Uh, like I did mention earlier, there is a bit of a brightness to them, but I don't find them fatiguing. I don't find it overbearing. There's just a little bit of brightness to them. But it does give you a very nice clarity and a very nice amount of detail when listening to music or using them for home theater. So moving on to the mid-range, I do feel like the Arendals, uh do have a little bit more clarity and detail retrieval in their mid-range versus the SVS Ultras. Uh, the SVS Ultras do have a very rich full mid-range but like I said before I do feel like they were lacking a bit of detail not that they were muddy they just were they, they seemed to have a little bit of a veil in front of them which I didn't realize until I heard much better speakers again those much better speakers are more expensive so we have to keep that in mind but that's something to point out here I do feel the Arendals did a better job with the mid-range so to sum it up I do feel that the high end on the Arendal 1723s is a step up from the SVS Ultras. When talking about the mid-range, again, I do feel the same way. I feel that the Arendal 1723s have a better clarity, have a better uh, amount of detail in the mid-range versus the SVS Ultras. The SVS Ultras do have a good mid-range. It's rich, it's full, but I do find that it's lacking a bit of detail, at least based off my memory, uh, versus the Arendal 1723s. Now, when talking about the bass, it does get a little bit more complicated because I do remember the SVS Ultras having some pretty phenomenal bass uh, output. I, I did find them to punch fairly hard for music and I found them to rumble quite nicely for home theater and, and the low end of music. But again, I do feel like the Arendals are just a little bit cleaner here. They're a little bit more nuanced uh, versus the SVS Ultras. They just offer an all around better speaker as they should for their price difference. So again, to sum it up, if you are on the fence between SVS Ultra or Arendal 1723s, my pick is... Obviously, the Arendal 1723s, they are the better all-around speaker. Uh, they do offer a little bit more clarity, a little bit more detail, and they still have a nice uh, mid-range with phenomenal bass and that nice, clean, detailed high end. So now the age-old question I know that everybody's going to ask me based on both of these speakers, is the Arendal 1723s worth it over the RP8000Fs or are they worth it over the SVS Ultra Tower speakers? Now this is where it gets really hard to answer this question for everybody because everybody's budget is different. Everybody has a different amount of money to work with when it comes to speakers. So for me personally, I would say yes, the Arendal 1723s are worth it over the Klipsch and the SVS Ultra speakers. The reason being is because, first of all, the build quality, I do feel like it punches above its uh, price point. The build quality is pretty exceptional here. Uh, they did make every attempt to make this a very well-built speaker by using high density fiber board. The finish looks very nice. Uh, the terminals are very nice. The brushed aluminum plate on the back is very nice and how they kind of uh, beveled around that plate again just adds a nice aesthetic to it. Uh, so that's reason number one. Reason number two is obviously the sound quality. So in my uh, review of the speaker I did point out that there's a bit of a richness in the mid-range and a little bit of brightness in the high end but for the most part these are very close to neutral and that's what a lot of people are looking for when it comes to a speaker and in this case they are delivering they have a good amount of detail in the high end they also have a good amount of detail in the mid-range and the bass just um, seems to be a little bit tighter uh, a little bit more well balanced with the speaker and again I guess that's the best way to put it is it's a very well balanced speaker it's very well designed and it it shows in the build quality and in the sound quality. So if you are on the fence about which speaker to buy and the Arendal 1723s are within your budget I would say no question, just go with the Arendal 1723s. You're going to be happy with these speakers. They are phenomenal. I do find that they punch above their price point for both build quality and sound quality, which is kind of hard to come by in today's day and age. Often you do find a speaker that'll punch above its price point with build quality and then be, you know, on par with its uh, price point with sound quality or vice versa. You'll find that it punches above the uh, price point with sound quality, but the build quality is kind of on par with the uh, price point. In this case, I do feel like Arendal kind of went above and beyond for both build quality and sound quality, which makes them pretty much my top pick here when it comes to these speakers. It's, it's just a no-brainer in my opinion. I have dropped links for the speakers down in the description below if you would like to check them out further. I do hope that you found this video helpful and I do hope that I answered all of your questions, but if I didn't, feel free to drop them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them all. If you made it this far in the video, you might as well subscribe. Tick the bell icon if you do and please take just one short second to hit that like button. I always do appreciate it. I would also appreciate if you would consider supporting the channel. I've dropped my Patreon link in the description or you can hit the join or the thanks button right below this video, but remember to enjoy your systems. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.